Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another interesting video. I've got a couple of tools here to show you which I've not really formally introduced um, but what we're going to do is use these tools to basically dig out a lot of dead skin from this ear canal. This particular patient presented to the clinic with hearing loss, slight discomfort and a feeling of fullness in the ear which you would expect and very little of it is wax, it's basically sheets and folds of dead skin packed, packed, packed into the ear canal. And uh, what I'm starting with here is a metal hook and I've shown this maybe on a couple of videos before fleetingly. Um, this particular tool doesn't have a name, it, uh, it, so it was made for me specially by a, a company called Chef Med, so we'll, at the moment I'll just, we'll just call it a custom hook or hook of justice, something like that. But uh, what I'm doing here, so this is very similar in dimensions to a core thorn hook. So it's really, really, really small. It looks big through the endoscope, but it is an extremely small thing. And um, uh, in my opinion, this is much better than a St. Bart's. It's smaller, it's neater, you can get into tiny, tiny spaces with it. And uh, it's very, very helpful in digging out blockages of this nature. So I'm just dragging all these sheets of dead skin forwards and as you can see as, as I drag it forwards all of these sheets start to unravel and um, you know it's a bit like digging a lasagna out of someone's ear it's you know or you know an onion it just kind of fragments and fragments and unravels and unravels. So um, as to why this has happened um, usually we say when we see you know the vast majority of the debris, the debris is dead skin the general kind of vague answer these are biopsy forceps by the way um, I thought these would be a really great purchase these biopsy forceps which are basically like crocodile forceps but the jaws are cupped so they have sort of shallow depressions in each jaw and I thought that would be wonderful because it will allow me to grab onto debris and maybe that debris won't you know just rip apart like when you grab something with crocodile forceps but they're not actually that good. They're, so they're far too large, like most forceps on the market, they really are too large. But the jaws don't close properly, which is really, really annoying. So, you know, this, what you're going to see here is just a complete failure to use the biopsy forceps. So that didn't work. So we're going to go back in with the hook. Um, so yeah, the normal explanation behind these blockages is it's a failure of skin migration. So the skin of the ear is supposed to start at the center of the eardrum grow outwards and down the ear canal and then shed somewhere within the first third of the ear canal, the outer third of the ear canal. And when you see blockages like this, we tend to say, okay, well, something has happened to screw up that migration, that conveyor belt of skin outwards. Um, you know, and, you know, I think in most cases, it's probably that someone's put something in their ear to push some of the skin back and then that's just led to an initial blockage and then all the skin behind it just fails to migrate out and it just backs up. And I think that's probably the case here, but uh, what I've come to recently understand is that also you can get these kind of weird folds and sheets of dead skin, and all, which almost look like membranes, when you have a, uh, like an infection or a furuncle uh, which is like an infected hair follicle. So this is something that um, um, Vic Veer alluded to in his reaction video uh, to my most recent complicated case, which I'll link down below in the description. But basically, if you have a, like a, a, an, infection, an infected hair follicle in the ear, on the ear canal, or just like a little laceration or something like that, an area of damage or trauma, then the skin that's migrating outward from the eardrum goes down the ear canal and meets that area of trauma and cannot get past it. So it kind of sheds down and down and down into the ear canal, creating these folds and sheets of dead skin. And over a long period of time, it can result in something like this, which is just loads and loads of sheets of dead skin, which has just failed to migrate out of the ear canal normally. So, um, so at this point, you know, the hook has kind of done a lot of leveraging already. Um, and what I'm trying to do here is just kind of wiggle it out of the ear canal because it's really at the entrance now. And you can see the different sheets of skin have different colors. So the 
basically the, the lighter the paler it is, the, the newer the skin, or the more recently it's been shed. And you can see that white sheet of dead skin, that's probably very recently been shed from the ear canal. Um, hence why it's that kind of in the outer layer. So wiggling, wiggling, this is clearly not working. So uh, I think at this point, did I use a Formby scoop? Again, it's, it's that it's that nearly out that I thought I could maybe reach for a, a larger scoop here to try and get it out, but it's just clinging on for dear life. Yeah, so this is a Formby scoop. I think I've shown this only once before. And a Formby scoop is just a very large Jobson horn, a very large metal smooth Jobson horn. And um, as you can see, it's just impractically large almost way too large for 99% of cases, but I thought I might get away with it here and be clever and just yank this plug out quickly. Um, but as you can see, it's it's just, I'm just, really, I'm just pushing it in further. I'm really just disturbing the plug, but ultimately I'm, I'm kind of undoing the work that I did and, and pushing it in further. And this is the problem with a lot of tools on the market. I'm just applying olive oil here. This is... Um, <coughs> This is the problem with a lot of tools on the market. So there are a lot of curettes and scoops and hooks and things like that on the market. And they're all, not all, but the vast majority of them are inappropriately large. And that's what happens. You end up pushing stuff back in. There's the plug. And I didn't lay it out on a tissue next to a ruler, but it, it's about two and a half centimeters. So it, it's, it's probably slightly longer than what it really is. Because again, I've been, I've been stretching the skin as I've been pulling it out. Eardrum there looks slightly abnormal. It looks thickened to me. It looks rather featureless. But again, this is a very elderly patient that we're working on. But otherwise, it doesn't look... It, it looks a little bit um, vascular, shall we say, but it doesn't look infected to me or anything. So overall, you know, that was a fairly successful case. Um, there we go. I hope you enjoyed a, a very brief look at the biopsy forceps and the custom hook and, of course, the re-emergence of the old Formby scoop there. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.